Hello, everyone. My name is Francois Levy. I'm an architect with a practice of about four people. And these days of uh, staying at home and working from home and being safe, we are um, all working independently at our respective places. And uh, usual ways of working, of marking up a set of uh, drawings and uh, handing those red lines off to somebody else, uh, not really very practical. So lately we've been using a lot of the Redline tool. This is a tool that's been around in Vectorworks for quite a while. It's not super complicated, uh, but it's got some nice features and um, very useful. So I thought I'd uh, review those. So uh, the Redline tool is, uh, uh, in my custom workspace, I've tucked it up. Uh, here behind the text tool, but it's in the uh, uh, dimensions and markups palette, dims and notes. Right? And um, I'm just going to zoom in over here to this detail so we can have a look at it and uh, do some marking up. And when you first launch Vectorworks, your current session, and you go to your uh, preferences, you can see that you have a default red line style and a default authorized by and assigned to, and you can change those. Um, depending on what you need. I've gone ahead and set this up, and then with every session it'll it'll reset to a couple of question marks for each of those two fields, and you can uh, type in the initials or the name, whatever you want. So that's fine, and I can draw a red line by oval or rectangle or a polygon or a freehand. I find rectangles to be pretty easy to use, so I'll go ahead and just draw a rectangle here with the red line tool and type in a note. There we go. And that's it. And it creates this lovely red line object. I can reposition the note. I can go to the object info palette and uh, edit the note. And uh, after that change has been made, whoever makes the change, they can go ahead and click on Picked Up, and then the red line turns yellow, like a highlighter. Kind of cool. And uh, so there we go. I'll go ahead and leave that one picked up. Now, I can also include uh, objects as a sketch. So let's go ahead and draw a rectangle here. Drop that in. And then do a red line again. And with the object selected, I'll draw my red line, type my note, and be sure and attach the current selection as a sketch. That will always be turned off by default. And there it is. It's part of the red line. Uh, it can be repositioned with this handle point, but then it'll be hard to snap it back to that corner. Just be aware. And then, of course, you can move that handle point to reposition the note. Now, uh, if you want to draw something that is maybe a little more complicated than just a rectangle, like that, you can do that. So here's, uh, here's three lines. Sometimes when I include that as a sketch, let me switch over to an oval here, uh, Vectorworks may... drop out part of that drawing, right? So you can see um, two of those lines got included in the sketch, but the last one did not. So let me undo. So a little workaround for that is just go ahead and group your sketch and then redline it. Attach a sketch. There we go. Always need to remember to uh, click on that attach a sketch. Now, um, I'm not limited to just redlining native Vectorworks drawings. I can also use the redline tool to, uh, in conjunction with imported PDFs. So here's the same sheet of details that got exported as a PDF and that I've re-imported into a Vectorworks file. 
So I can zoom over here. So while it's fine to mark up your files uh, in Acrobat or Preview, whatever you use to mark up your PDFs, there's certain things like drawing dimensions or complicated little sketches that are really difficult to do in those applications. So in this case, I'm just going to, uh, for example, use the fact that I can snap to a PDF. So there we go. There's that dimension. Okay, and I'll go ahead and draw a red line. And make that a note. Attach a sketch. So there you go. So um, you can use Vectorworks itself as a really nice sort of PDF markup environment. Now, of course, if I re-export this PDF and give it back to somebody, say a consultant who's not a Vectorworks user, they're not going to be able to turn off all the red lines as an annotation. That's the one downside. But it's going to be a lot easier to, to mark this up. So uh, just something to think about. And then finally, after you've spent a uh, you know, morning redlining, you may have quite a few notes. And being able to keep track of which ones have been picked up and which ones haven't could be uh, kind of tedious, sort of leafing through all of your sheets. So um, under Tools, you can create a custom report. Right, create a report, objects with a record is your criteria, and then you can list all the different objects with records that are in your current file, and I'll just start typing red, and it'll highlight red line objects so I can find it. So now it's going to find all the red line objects and create a report from that. Uh, be sure and include viewport annotations as um, being included, so that if you're marking up inside your viewport annotations, that shows up in the report. Here are all the possible records you could have. You don't necessarily need all of them in the report. So we'll start with uh, creation date, add that, and then authorize by and add that, and then what the notation really actually says, we'll just add that. Um, whether or not it's been picked up, picked up, yes or no, and then who it was assigned to, for example. And there we go. And I'll just place it here, and there's that uh, there's that report. Now, obviously, I can uh, format that any way that I want, just like I would any Vectorworks uh, worksheet. Make this column narrower, change the font, um, you know, hide the uh, viewport, uh, the database headers, excuse me. And so I can see all of these that were assigned by, and I could sort by column A or B or whatnot. So some of the nuances of the Redline tool hopefully will make collaborating with your colleagues while you're working from home a little bit easier, and hope it's useful. Take care.